Okay, in this video, we're going to look at GPIO interfacing. Now, we're going to look at the Arduino Uno and also the Arduino Nano, which is basically the same thing. Now, the microcontroller on the Uno is an Atmega 328P, which is a 5 volt device. Now, if you configure one of the GPIO pins as an input, it wants to see a voltage of 0 to 5 volts max. And if you go higher than 5 volts, you could damage the device. Now, if you configure one of the GPIO pins as an output, you'll output a voltage of 0 and 5 volts with a maximum source and sink current. So we have a few restrictions here. What about if we wanted to monitor a voltage that's higher than 5 volts? Or to drive a device that has a supply voltage higher than 5 volts? We would need to do some interfacing. So in this video, we're going to focus on components that have special properties to interface the GPIO to the outside world. Okay, here's a diagram of two GPIO pins on the Atmega 328P microcontroller. Now both pins are configured as outputs and the first pin you see here is sourcing current and the second pin is sinking current. Now on the pin that is sourcing current the microcontroller supplies the 5 volts and the user supplies the ground. So you have current flowing from the pin plus 5 volts through the resistor LED to ground turning on the LED. Now the pin that is sinking current the user supplies the 5 volts and the microcontroller supplies the ground. So you have current flowing from 5 volts through the resistor LED to ground and out turning on the LED. Now the maximum source or sink current of any pin is 40 milliamps. And the total GPIO pin current is 200 milliamps. So you can see with the amount of GPIO pins you can exceed that pretty quickly. So if you want to control a device in the outside world that takes more current and voltage than the GPIO pin can supply, then you need some kind of buffer, you need some kind of interface, It'll take a small current and it'll enable a bigger current. Something like a transistor or a relay or a solid state relay. So we'll be looking at some components and some schematics that will enable us to do that. Okay, the first thing that we're going to look at are some GPIO input interfaces. So the first thing we see here is an input pin of a microcontroller and inside the microcontroller are two protection diodes. Now these diodes protect against transient spikes. Now when the amplitude of the spike at this point here becomes 5 volts plus the voltage drop of this diode, 0.6 volts, this diode will start to conduct. And it will feed this point here into the VCC power supply. And it will clamp this point at 5.6 volts. Now the diode takes the brunt of the voltage spike because of the short duration, but if we would put a steady 10 volts at this point here, at the input of the microcontroller, it would burn out this diode. So what we do, we put a resistor in series with the microcontroller pin, and if we feed 10 volts at the input of the resistor, this point here will be clamped at 5.6 volts, and the rest of the voltage will be dropped across the resistor. Now this will current limit the current into the microcontroller pin, and it won't affect the diodes in any way. So that's another way we could increase the input voltage of the GPIO pin. Okay, here's another solution to increase the input voltage range of a GPIO. So what we see here are three logic gates. Now these logic gates have special properties. They all have a supply voltage of 5 volts, but they all have an input voltage range of 0 to 15 volts. Now the first one is a buffer, the CD4050. So 15 volts in will have 5 volts out. And the second one is an inverter, the CD4049. So 15 volts in will have 0 volts out. And the last one is a 74C914. And that's a, that's a Schmidt trigger inverter. So it has a higher trigger threshold on the input for noisy inputs and slow moving inputs. So that's my favorite, that's the one I use the most. So if you run across the 74C914, that's a good one to stock in your parts bin. Okay, when we start getting into the higher voltages, we should be looking into using opto-isolators. So we get some isolation between the high voltage and the microcontroller. So the one I'm using here is the MOC8020, which has some special properties. Now this opto-isolator has a current transfer ratio of 500%. Now that's the ratio of the current in the collector to the current through the LED, which means it's a very sensitive opto-isolator. So if you have a high level input that varies, like say the, the input here is sometimes it's 20 volts, sometimes it's 30 volts, sometimes it's 25 volts, you can select the right value for R that all those three voltages will cause the collector to saturate. So if you look in the data sheet, it'll tell you how to calculate the right value for R for your input voltages. If you are having trouble interfacing a device to your microcontroller, this will be the solution. Now this opto-isolator has an input voltage range of 5 volts to 240 volts, 
AC or DC. Now inside this opto isolator is a bridge rectifier for the AC input and a constant current source that drives the LED which will saturate the output transistor and switch 5 volts to your microcontroller. Now all you have to do is calculate RX, that's, your, that's the input resistor, for your threshold input voltage. Now if you look at the data sheet and you look at the external threshold characteristics chart, it'll tell you how to calculate RX for your input threshold. So this is the HCPL 3700. It's a little bit pricey, but it might be worth it. Okay, this is probably the cheapest way to interface a device to your microcontroller using an NPN transistor, a 2N3904. Now to calculate the value for R, just get yourself a variable power supply and hook it up to the input. And adjust the power supply to your desired threshold voltage. Then vary the value for R until the collector saturates until the voltage from the collector to ground is around 0.3 volts and that will give you a good indication for the value for R. So next we're going to look at some GPIO output interfaces. Okay here is our first GPIO output interface. Now these will cover most of your output needs. Now these are open collector Darlington output drivers and they can switch up to 50 volts at 500 milliamps. Now if you're driving an inductive load like a relay they have built-in freewheeling diodes in the chip itself. So these are logic level inputs, so 5 volt input will drive the output. So these are the ULN 2803 and the ULN 2003. Okay, here are the heavy current drivers. Now these are N channel MOSFETs and they all have special properties. They're all logic level inputs. So 5 volts on the gate will drive these MOSFETs. Because not all MOSFETs are logic gate input, take note of the three part numbers and their current capabilities. Now these three parts come in a TO220 package and the MOSFET below is a lower current drive MOSFET and it comes in a TO92 package. Now don't forget the gate to source resistor that will bleed off any gate capacitance voltage. Okay this is our final output interface and I've ended it with a simple NPN 2N3904 transistor interface which can switch 40 volts at 200 milliamps. But also there's solid state relays and you get them in two versions. You can get an AC version or a DC version. This is an AC version which you can switch 120 volts at 10 amps. And there's also a DC version which you can switch 50 volts at 20 amps. Now these are easy to embed into your project even though they cost a bit more. So I hope this video gave you some ideas how to interface your GPIO into the outside world.